Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. The Big Short is a very, very odd duck of a movie that will create a complex emotional response in you as a viewer. You may be confused, you may be depressed, and you will definitely be disoriented, but you will be exhausted from laughing and leave the theater thoroughly entertained. There is really no more unique and singular movie this year. It's a potent powder keg of experimental filmmaking techniques carried off by a cast and crew so incensed, so full of righteous rage, you can feel them throw at every single storytelling technique at you in an order to get their message across. This picture has been nominated for Best Picture by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association as a comedy, and rightly so. There are a lot of laughs here, but The Big Short is definitely the angriest comedy you've ever seen. It's bitter. It pulses with an uneasy tension, and unlike most comedies, you will not leave the theater feeling better than when you walked in. You may not even leave the theater comprehending the material as much as you might have hoped, though the movie will do its best to educate you. But when you see The Big Short, and I recommend that you do, you will be moved in new and extraordinary ways. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. In 2008, the world was hit by a global financial meltdown. Millions of people lost their homes, their life savings, their jobs. It was a difficult and confusing time. Now, numerous documentaries have been made on the subject since then, and each one struggles with the same task, explaining just what happened within the mortgage and real estate industries that caused this collapse of the worldwide economy. It's complicated, and it's kind of boring and hard to follow. Even if, as was the case with Inside Job, there's helpful animation and voiceover narration provided by Academy Award winner Matt Damon. In the new system, lenders sold the mortgages to investment banks. The investment banks combined thousands of mortgages and other loans, including car loans, student loans, and credit card debt, to create complex derivatives called collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs. Now when homeowners paid their mortgages, the money went to investors all over the world. An investor who purchased a credit default swap paid AIG a quarterly premium. But unlike regular insurance, speculators could also buy credit default swaps from AIG in order to bet against CDOs they didn't own. Now, you see those speculators on the right? The Big Short is about those guys. A group of financial geniuses who did what no one else did at the time, according to this movie. They looked. They got curious about these bad investments, and they actually looked. And they saw what was coming. And they were powerless to stop it. And so they did the only thing that they could do about it. They decided to profit from it. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on the cast here, because if I did, we'd be here all day. Each member of this extraordinarily deep cast creates a unique and indelible character. Steve Carell's nebbish loudmouth with personal demons is probably the most rootable, with Christian Bale's heavy metal listening barefoot eccentric genius not far behind. So Mike Burry, a guy who gets his hair cut at Supercuts and doesn't wear shoes, knows more than Alan Greenspan and Hank Paulson. Yeah, Dr. Mike Burry, yes he does. <laughs> Ryan Gosling has played sleazebags before, but his character, Jared Vennett, is one for the books, and he gets the line that will inspire memes for years. I mean, seriously, I feel like I'm financially inside of you or something. Okay. Uh, I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the tits! <laughs> okay, if you want that again, I'll give it to you again. Uh, I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the tits! Now you're looking at one of the many scenes in which one of the movie's characters explains the complicated concepts using some sort of metaphor. The modern ones are different. They're private. And they're made up of layers of tranches. The highest level AAA is getting paid first. The lowest rated B is getting paid last, taking on defaults first. Somewhere along the line, these Bs and double Bs went from a little risky to dog shit. Where's the trash? Behind you. I'm talking rock bottom FICO scores. 
no income verification. Adjustable rates, dog shit. Let me put it this way. I'm standing in front of a burning house and I'm offering you fire insurance on it. There are many such scenes. In fact, several times a character will break the fourth wall and he'll be talking like this and then he'll look right at the camera and introduce a famous person who will just stop the narrative completely to explain something to you. Now, I won't spoil any of these surprise cameos here because they sure are fun, even if they do sort of pull into focus the movie's cynical, flippant tone. And the man most responsible for that tone is probably director Adam McKay, who has previously only made goofy, irreverent comedies like Anchorman and Talladega Nights. And now he's taking that irreverence and applying it to a more serious subject matter, resulting in a straightforward story that keeps getting interrupted by breaking the fourth wall or winking title cards or narrative flights of fancy. It feels like a Lewis Black concert. A really funny guy dealing in measured political satire but getting so angry at the injustice of it all that he just devolves into barking his punchlines. Still very, very funny, but in an odd, uncomfortable sort of way. You can see this dichotomy in scenes where he will cut before a character has finished his line of dialogue. Now, you can always figure out what the person was saying, but cutting that way really knocks you back on your heels, creating a sense of confusion. It's intentionally disorienting. It's irreverent, but with a purpose, because the implications of what these guys discover are so insidious, the mind reels and the editing of this movie creates that reeling feeling for you. You may also find yourself reeling over the emotional pull of these stories. These guys are the protagonists of the movie and they are very smart, so we naturally want to root for them. But as the character played by Brad Pitt points out with quiet dignity in a scene that is really kind of brilliant in its subtlety, their success is not really worth dancing about because if they win, the world economy loses. They're not in the business of making things better. They're in the business of basically stealing from crooks. And while that may be exciting from a Robin Hood perspective, they're not giving the money back to the poor because there's no way they could possibly steal enough back to balance the books. And so their victory is a hollow one. When they're proven right, there's no uplifting, stick it to the man, fist pumping. It looks for a long time that they may not even profit at all in the end. The complex financial machinations that the movie took such cute and innovative pains to explain to us become muddier by the end of the movie and harder to follow. I know they slipped through my fingers near the end and I was so proud of myself for following it that far. And Steve Carell's exit line and his final shot in the movie just perfectly sums up the white hot rage of the creative team. It refuses to allow him or us to call the ending of victory. Not when we've seen all of the crap that we've seen. I award The Big Short a large bag of popcorn. This movie is a cathartic, outrageous middle finger to the crooks who destroyed the banking system made with loads of talented people and not a whole lot of restraint. As fast and loose as predatory lenders played with the rules of banking, so the filmmakers here play fast and loose with the rules of pacing, tone, and consistency. But its fascinating power cannot be denied. Like a bull in a china shop, The Big Short is powerful, unbridled, and admittedly fun to watch, but in the end, devastating. You haven't seen a film quite like this one before. Simultaneously outrageous with its humor and humorous in its outrage. That does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And if you liked what you saw, be sure to click the thumbs up icon and subscribe right down there to keep those reviews coming at you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and I am jacked. I'm jacked to the tits. <laughs>